I definitely believe that we're trying to incarcerate people that come out of projects without teaching. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is David Brooks, the Cadillac Counselor, coming at you to tell you a little piece of my mind. And today we have to talk about the John Hansen Projects here in Frederick. Now, this is going to be a talk not just about John Hansen, but talk about projects in general. And are we trying to incarcerate the problem that was started way back some time ago? So let's start with John Hansen, this fellow right here. He was a Marylander, born and raised out of the tobacco farms. Now, he was a planner, born to a planner. He had a lot of money, grew up in wealth. His parents probably had over a thousand acres back then, and they were slave owners at some point. Now, him, he died with about 225 acres here in Frederick, and he had about 11 slaves at the time of his death. Some people even look at him as the first president of the United States. Some might argue that, but we can definitely say that this man here had did some major things in the revolution of America. He stood up against the, the, against the British and he had something to say. Even to this day, a lot of lawmakers are trying to take his statue out of Battery Hall and replace it with Harriet Tubman, another born Maryland, who they think had more of an impact on America. So I've been in the area for roughly about 10, 11 years, and I've been doing therapy, criminal behavior, and substance abuse. Generation of children who were born in the John Hansen Projects. Those children are, I would say, roughly about 70, 80% of them have been incarcerated or have legal problems in some way, shape, or form. Now, this is the deal. This right here is a picture that was taken a couple of days after a double homicide back when John Hansen was standing. Now, as we look, this was a very big community. It was large. Many people were coming out of this. It got so bad that the police wouldn't even go in John Hansen. People in the community didn't go into John Hansen. I've had several children who said that they had to wake themselves up just to go to school. Now imagine looking at your kid and imagine if he had to grow up or she had to grow up waking herself up or waking himself up to go into school. Did they eat properly? Especially if you have parents that were on drugs and many different issues that come from it. But then what happens? Every single time they end up going to court for selling drugs or some other type of behavior coming out of the, a lifestyle like John Hansen or any other project, what do you expect? Do you just think that you can just incarcerate them and they're going to learn and know better? Now, we can always say common sense. They just don't have common sense. But is it? No, I think they were raised in a place that had to be survival. They had to they, find something to eat. They had to do many different things in order to get themselves to the point where they could have something on the table. Yes, there probably was welfare, and yes, there was probably social services that were involved, but does it really help? Yes, giving things to people and saying, hey, hey, now you can live for the next month. Is that teaching? No. A lot of these young people and this young man that I had spoke about earlier, he never learned. He never learned how to. Now, we look at ourselves and we look at our children and us in the community that didn't grow there. We say, well, we don't want them in our community. I remember going into the places in New Orleans where they had real projects. The cars parked up next to the buildings. People walking around with guns everywhere. Now, what are you going to say? You could probably go into Chicago. You could probably go into many of these other places that they consider to be liberal or they consider them to be places that people don't care. What happens? A lot of gun violence, a lot of drug dealing, and a lot of things that are not conducive to be our great America. But what happened? What happened was is that people turned an eye to it just like they did when they made the wire. 
Nobody, they thought it was entertaining. But is it really entertaining to watch young people be raised like wildlings? Whenever they, they literally just live to survive until the next day. What do we expect? This is something that we need to do. Don't get me wrong, we can always say, pull yourself up by your own bootstrap. Get yourself together and make a living. Start working. Forget about that old lifestyle. Forget about how you were raised. But is it really true? Can it happen? It can't happen with someone who's motivated by a grandmother or some other family member that's probably wasn't raised there. But what are we really looking for? We need to start looking for ways to teach young people who are raised in projects or in low income housing how to create a different mindset. Sending them to prison and sending them to jail is not doing it. Supervising them on probation is not doing it. We have to truly create plans and avenues that when they get in trouble or when they get incarcerated, when they break some type of law, find them a way to divert them. Because if we keep incarcerating, they get out and they go right back in within a year or two. Do we want to keep the cycle up? It looks like we do. But if we really want to change something, we have to change their criminalistic mindset and reduce a lot of their criminogenic needs and risk factors. This is clinical. This is the only way that's going to work. But you can say what you want to say about John Hansen, the man because he had some flaws, but I will say that he was a man that had influence, just like Harriet Tubman. I don't say which one is better than the other, but what I will say is John Hanson Apartments and these projects that these young people are growing out of, now they're late 30s and early 40s, and maybe even 50-year-old people who still live dysfunctional lives. Is it our fault? Probably not. But is it our duty to figure out how to reinvent and restructure the brain of someone who grew up in low housing apartments and projects? It's David Brooks, the Cadillac Counselor. And if we have faith like a mustard seed, I believe that we can truly change this problem. Take it easy. Bye.